story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good evening, Court TV News on the R. I'm Tolu Ojewumi. We've got this update for you. A car bomb has killed at least 25 people on Akali Road in Kaduna city centre. Eyewitnesses say the bomb went off shortly after the convoy of a prominent Islamic cleric, Sheikh Dahiru Boche, had driven past a red golf car. The cleric, who escaped unhurt, was said to be on his way to the popular Murtala Square on Isakaita Road where he was to lead a Ramadan prayer session. Police Commissioner Omar Shewu confirmed that at least 25 persons were killed and scores of people injured. This is the second time in about a month that Islamic cleric will be targeted. He is known for his criticism of Boko Haram, but it's not known whether the group was behind the car bomb. Nigeria's military authorities have declared the technician of the ill-fitted Air Force helicopter as missing in action. This comes on a day a video surfaced online uh, that purportedly shows a Boko Haram insurgent beheading an airman. Defense headquarters said in a statement that the technician was declared missing in action because his body has not been recovered from the crash scene in Bama, Bruno State. It added that only one body, that of the co pilot, has so far been recovered while the other was rescued alive. Rescue teams are said to be searching the vicinity for the missing technician, who is the third crew member of the helicopter that crashed a few days ago. Defense headquarters claim the MI-35 chopper crashed due to a technical fault during a training mission, and there is no independent confirmation of the air mishap. But there are suggestions that insurgents may have shut down the helicopter. Now, President Goodluck Jonathan has assured parents of the kidnapped Chibok schoolgirls that they will be brought back alive. This was part of the promises he personally made during a long-drawn meeting with the parents and about 50 girls who escaped from insurgents. These are the girls who escaped on the day Boko Haram insurgents stormed their school in April this year. One after the other, they filed into the presidential villa for a meeting with President Jonathan. They were accompanied by some of the parents of their colleagues who have spent more than three months in captivity. A handful of cabinet members joined the president as well as the governors of Borno and Bauche State. Journalists were barred from the meeting which lasted more than five hours. So it was left to the presidential spokesman to give an insight into what he described as a frank session. The president reassured them of the federal government's determination and his personal determination to ensure that the girls that are still in captivity are brought out alive. He made it clear that that is the main objective of the government. Mr. President also used the opportunity to empathize with the parents, with the girls, and to reassure them that everything will be done uh, to make things easier for them, particularly the ones that have already escaped and the ones that will also be rescued. Mr. President assured them that their education will not in any way suffer and that after all of this has had a happy ending because he believes, he is convinced that evil will never prevail over good. Some of the ministers who were in the meeting are also convinced that the Chibok girls will soon be reunited with their parents and colleagues. To some of the girls that were able to escape from Sambisa forest, or those of them that escaped even on the first day they were abducted. And I think the parents were happy to have listened to Mr. President, uh, assuring them of the commitment of government, 
assuring them of the determination of government to rescue the abducted girls, and in particular assuring those of them that are now home with their parents on the continuation of their education and continued protection of lives and properties in those communities. Yeah, essentially, the, the, the expectation of the average Nigerian is the release of the girls, but there must be foundations for the release of these girls. While this thing cannot be done almost immediately, uh, while efforts are being put in place, there is equally a need for Mr. President to reassure the people that are directly involved are Nigerians that government is doing everything that is necessary to release these girls. And I can assure you that from various reports that are coming in, and Mr. President knows much more than any other person knows in this country about this situation, the release of these girls will be a matter of time. One of the governors also provided a different perspective. What the presidency uh, was aware of was slightly yes, uh, uh, the insurgents have gone into the school, uh, gone into the village, picked students and picked some, 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 some women too. So to say that uh, it is belated, that the government didn't know about it until now, I think that is very unfair. Rushing to you know, uh, rescue them might lead to you know, some casualties, which is why government is taking time, uh, going solo, solo, so that by the grace of God, we will get all the girls in peace. Not in pieces. More than 200 people attended the meeting from Chibok, including 51 of the 57 girls who escaped from insurgents. But none of them was prepared to share details of their interaction with the president. An associate fellow of the Henry Jackson Society and the Gemstone Foundation, Jacob Ben, says former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton misled President Barack Obama on the enormity of the threat of Boko Haram. The situation, he says, stopped America from coming to Nigeria's aid before the insurgency got out of hand. Zen made this allegation in his report, exposing and defeating Boko Haram, while the West must unite to help Nigeria defeat terrorism, which was released by the Bill Group on Tuesday. He said the U.S. only labeled Boko Haram and its offshoot, Ansaru, as of November 13, 2013, after Clinton's departure from office, making it a crime for Americans to provide material support to the group and enabling banks to freeze U.S. assets of the terrorists. He further alleged that Boko Haram received finances from domestic actors who oppose President Jonathan and foreign sponsors who want to see Nigeria divided and Western economic interests attacked. Now more than 2 million people from areas affected by Boko Haram insurgency are now taking refuge in Boji state. Governor Issa Yuguda disclosed these on the sidelines of Tuesday's meeting in Abuja with members of the Chiba community. He added that the state resources are now overstretched by the refugee situation. Well, up for the refugees, uh, we've been, uh, it's a major challenge. Uh, Bauchi is surrounded uh, by you know states that has uh, security challenges, and uh, uh, many refugees are coming flocking into Bauchi. Presently, we have over two million refugees in Bauchi, but the good news is that we've been able to settle them down. Nobody is, uh, no refugee is uh, in any camp. They've all uh, been resettled in some got, gotten land for them to resettle, some shelter for them, make to provide water and some basic facilities so that they can start life all over together. So uh, it has not been easy. Our resources are overstretched because uh, the little we have has to you know, be shared with the refugees. Is there any assistance from any quarters on that? Well, uh, we are looking forward to support. Uh, only of recent anyway, we had some, you know, uh, some, 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 some items from, uh, from, from Neymar who uh, provided us with some blankets, some food items, and uh, we need more. Uh, we need a lot more. But by the grace of God, I believe uh, the refugee pro the issue, because I'm sure these guys are not going back to where they came from. They have settled and settled permanently. So I think the federal government is going to take up that and uh, see how they can be properly resettled. The All Progressives Congress says what is needed to effectively tackle the Boko Haram menace is new and imaginative thinking. Instead of sticking to the same old way of doing things, 
which is what the federal government's uh, 1 billion US dollars loan request represents. In a statement issued in Abuja by its National Publicity Secretary, Lai Mohammed, the party says, while no reasonable person will argue against procuring modern weapons and other needs for the military, it is absolutely important to complement the military campaign against Boko Haram with political, social and economic measures. This, according to the APC, is against the backdrop of a sustained but failed military campaign to end the crisis, which dates back to 2009. APC also warned that by continuing to put undue emphasis on military campaign alone, the federal government is signaling a hardening of position, indicating that the crisis can only be resolved by a military campaign and foreclosing negotiation. The party added that unfortunately for the federal government, nowhere in the world has insurgency been defeated purely by military campaign, not even by the world's most powerful militaries. Members of the Nasara State House of Assembly have directed the chief judge of the state to set up a seven-man panel to investigate Governor Tanko Amakura. The lawmakers, who had been in Abuja for several days, moved down to Lafia on Wednesday and almost immediately passed the resolution. The motion was moved by Majority Leader Godia Akusheke and seconded by Baba Ibaku. Speaker Musa Mohammed, who presided over the session, subsequently ordered the chief judge to constitute a seven-member panel. Meanwhile, Governor Almakura, who has also returned to Lafia, has been holding meetings with traditional rulers with a view to staving off uh, the impeachment drive. Still on impeachment stories, after the successful impeachment of the former governor of Adama State, Murtalan Yako, reports of impeachment threats are beginning to rise across the country. Rashid Rashid spoke with some leaders of the All Progressive Congress APC, who outright blamed the ruling People's Democratic Party PDP for the travels of some APC governors. The report. The news lately is centered on the impeachment fever that is gradually gripping some sitting governors. The most affected are the All Progressive Congress. Adamawa State Governor Murtala Yako was successfully impeached by the State House of Assembly. The tension has now shifted to Nazarawa State, where Tanko Almakura is facing impeachable charges. But the Oyo State Governor, Abiola Ajimobi, reportedly being on impeachment radar, however debunked such rumor as shallow and unfounded. It was just a ruse. It was just a cheap publicity. It can never happen. Tell me, remember I say so, it can never happen. I'm going to win second time. No impeachment. Another APC chieftain and a seventh senator, Sholade, using the Adamawa drama as a case study, says the impeachable offenses allegedly committed by Umurtala Iyako is also being committed by President Gilad Jonathan. The principal allegation against Governor Iyanko was that he spent money that had not been budgeted for. A week before they pronounced that impeachment, the Nigerian Senate debated a report that showed that our own president spent billions of naira that were never budgeted for. A pro-democracy activists and APC stalwart Amito Lushito says every impeachment act is a call to political instability in the country, orchestrated by the PDP-controlled central government. Legal, illegal removal of Adama State Governor. The consciousness of people in Adama, they wake it up. And those in Nasarawa will not sleep again. They will, the Mr. President will wake up the consciousness of the people in Benin. And the whole nation will go with crisis. For God's sake, is that not, is that not a threat to democracy? A former speaker of the Osho State House of Assembly, Majid Alabi, however, called on all stakeholders involved to make a recourse on impeachment cases for the sake of Nigeria's nascent democracy. The impeachment process is put in the Constitution as a mechanism of legislature to put the governors in check, not to be used as a mechanism of vendetta. 
It is not to be used as an instrument to use the legislature to win them into taking action that are at variance with the popular wish of the mandate of the people. And that is why we must caution whoever, whether as an individual or as group that are behind this thing, that they should tell softly because eventually the spate of impeachment without following the due process of the constitution may consume the entirety of the democracy and everyone will have him or herself to blame. Some observers say the rampant cases of impeachment threats across the country is a strategy adopted by politicians to clinch power in the 2015 general elections. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ejibo. Now, the military has been urged to refrain from any act that would undermine the current democratic experience in the country. Lagos State Governor Babatan Defanshala gave advice while hosting the Chief of Army Staff, Kenneth Minima, at the State House Marina. Fashala says professionalism is needed to combat the current security challenges facing the nation. The military then owes an obligation to do everything that is possible, everything that is possible to sustain the democracy and to refrain from doing anything that undermines it, whether in the minds of the people or as a matter of fact. This institution has done very well for Nigeria as a body, but they are, like every institution, every family, there are bad eggs within the institution. They are in the minority and we must continue to do everything possible to show them up for who they are. The police authorities are working on building a 26-bed hospital in each of the six geopolitical zones of the country. Inspector General of Police Mohamed Abako discussed these on the sidelines of a three-day medical seminar for the police in Abuja. This, according to him, will ensure that all police personnel have access to quality healthcare services. Paul Samuel has details. We are building 26, 26, 26 bed cottage hospital in each zoopolitical zone of Nigeria. So in essence, which means everybody has the opportunity, and there is no command today you can talk about without a medical facility, no matter how small it is. So if you have in 36 states, and we have one in each of the political zones, it, it, it makes sense that we are making efforts and we'll get there one day. Money matters. The World Bank says the disparities between southern and northern parts of Nigeria is on the rise. It specifically says in its newly released Nigeria Economic Report that the southwest is in the most advantageous position with fewer poor people, while the situation in the northeast is getting worse. The bank, however, insists that Nigeria has a positive economic outlook aside from recording some progress in poverty reduction. It's the second edition of the Nigeria Economic Report put together by the World Bank. The focus is on microeconomic situation and trends, but a major part of it is devoted to poverty in Nigeria. The bank notes that the country now has a larger and more diversified economy than previously thought. Uh, the size of GDP, uh, which is uh, uh, 2013 equivalent to the U.S. Uh, $509 billion, uh, is, uh, makes Nigeria the 26th largest country in the world and uh, economy in the world, uh, and it's 61% 60, higher than, than, in, than the estimate in 2010, which is the base year, than the previous estimate. Uh, all the way to 2013, where the estimate is 89% higher than, than the previous estimate. Uh, the distribution of growth is also much more diverse, with higher contributions from manufacturing and various uh, services relative to previous estimates. Uh, previous estimates assign the majority of growth, 80% of growth, to trade, agriculture, and to telecommunications. The authors of the report are, however, puzzled that in spite of its size and wealth, Nigeria has a high poverty rate. Particularly of concern to the bank is the gap between the North and the South. Disparities between the North, very, very strong disparities between the South and the North, and particularly the Northeast and Northwest, uh, and that these disparities actually appear to be increasing. Uh, we have poverty rates that range from 16% in the Southwest all the way to 52% in the Northeast. 
Um, and, and while the, the South and also North Central experienced declines in the poverty rate between 2010, 2011, and the, and the, the 2012, 2013, the poverty rate actually increased in, North, in the Northeast and it's remained almost unchanged in the Northwest. The World Bank puts Nigeria's unemployment rate at less than 10%, but says underemployment is the real problem. Uh, but most Nigerians are doing something, right? So, so they are technically working. The problem is that a large share of the population is engaged in low productivity, low paying tasks. Uh, there is a, a, a shortage of uh, high productivity jobs. The bank says Nigeria's economic outlook is positive, but wants more attention on improvements in key infrastructure and increased productivity. It also believes that agriculture holds the key to poverty reduction in the northern region alongside improved security, especially in the northeast. In the meantime, the Lagos budget for uh, the last six months in performance has been placed at 86%. Governor Fashola disclosed this while briefing the media after the quarterly budget review meeting. Fashola says the budget performance is evident with the completion of several capital projects. He added that the internally generated revenue IGR has been instrumental to development in Lagos. You're talking about free education, you're talking about roads, bridges, drainages. 70% of what we have spent on governing Lagos has come from a common contribution, people's income. So people who come now and say, don't pay tax, they don't like you, are the real enemies of the people. If people stop paying tax, it means that this state will go cap in hand every month with, to go and collect 7 billion naira. And the big dreams, people are still asking us for roads, then we will be unable to do them. So it's deception, is untrue. No economy across the world has developed without payment of taxes and contributions because that is also what brings the participation in democracy. If your money is in it, your commitment will be, will be stronger. Ban Ki-moon wants Israel and Hamas to halt the spiraling violence in Gaza. Details in a moment. Don't go away. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliaments from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453-3407 A 24 hour news station You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live And welcome to Core TV Primetime News To follow us on Twitter Click on Twitter icon on our website And Facebook Click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News, a 24 hour news station. Now, the United Nations Chief Ban Ki moon says Israel and Hamas should halt the spiraling violence in Gaza as it pushed diplomatic efforts to end bloodshed that has killed 620 Palestinians. Following top-level talks in Cairo, the UN chief headed to Israel to deliver his message in person as the 15-day conflict showed no sign of easing. As the conflict entered its third week, neither side showed any sign of willingness to pull back, with Israel refusing to halt its fire without finishing a ground operation to destroy tunnels used by militants for cross-border attacks. Even as the diplomats talked, Palestinian rockets continued to fall on central Israel, prompting the United States carrier a Delta to indefinitely suspend its flight to the Jewish state over security concerns. Now, European Union foreign ministers say they believe an arms embargo against Russia needs to be considered after the downing of a Malaysian airplanes uh, widely blamed on uh, pro-Moscow rebels. 
A British Foreign Secretary, Philip Hammond, said the tragedy happened because of Russian support for the rebels. An EU leader's summit recommended that the European Union extend its sanctions against Russian and Ukraine figures for their role in the crisis. But the downing of flight MH17 had changed the situation completely, Hammond said. British Prime Minister David Cameron had called on the EU to adopt tougher phase three sanctions and to hold all arms sales to Russia, citing specifically a French contract for two helicopter carriers worth 1.2 billion euros. That's all. Thanks for watching. I'm Tolu Ojeomi. Good evening. I'll see you again soon.